guys welcome back to my channel so today I'm going to um, do a recap slash review of 90 day fiance before the vows season 2 episode 1 and 2 because um, episode 1 has already aired so I, I didn't do a video for episode 1 so I'm gonna kind of combine episode 1 and 2 together plus we get to meet someone new um, this episode which I was excited about so let's get into each couple so let's start off with let's start off with um, Karini and Paul. So Paul finally gets to Brazil. He's very excited to meet Karini. Karini's really excited to meet him. So <laughs> the first thing that happens to him, um, which of all people shouldn't happen to, um, the airline forgot his luggage. So he basically has to meet Karini like empty handed. It kind of looked weird because he had that trolley that you um, used to pack your luggage on and he, and he was walking with that to meet her. But anyways, um, I guess they're more of a reserved couple because I expected some more like excitement to see each other since they haven't seen each other in a couple of months but it was very reserved. Um, I still don't understand the whole like we don't speak the same language, we're using an app translator to communicate which I do think that like talk out loud um, thing that they are doing now is much better but it still takes a while for them to communicate but anyways they meet each other it's all like dandy and stuff this time instead of um, Paul going up to Karini's um, village they decide to stay where they are so and Paul gets a hotel and um, I thought it was really nice of Karini to get him a gift. Um, she got him the mosquito uh, mosquito bed, which he can't live without. And she also got him some cologne, um, which I feel like he wasn't that appreciative of it. Um, but like I also understand like how his mind works and how he was kind of like, uh, bugs will attract, um, will <laughs> be attracted to me and stuff. And like I'm one to not like bugs either, but. I feel like he was also doing the most and carrying on all types of ways. Anyways, they, they meet up, um, it looks like they're really into each other, um, he brought his police records to show um, her father, because um, even though Paul looks very timid and very like um, quiet, he has a long rap sheet. Well, not that long, but he has a rap sheet, he's in time, so... He's not um, exactly squeaky clean. But anyways, they meet up and stuff like this. So one of the issues that Paul wants to address to Karini is that um, uh, she's, he saw her comment on some other guy's, I think his name was Joe, Instagram account with like heart emojis and stuff like this. And he just wanted to know where she stand with that. Like, is, he, is she cheating on him? And like, what's the deal with that? So, they spend their like cute night together. And then they decide to go walk the streets for a bit. Which, uh, Brazil looks, looks super, super beautiful. Um, so then he, the only thing is Karini's attitude is a little bit standoffish. Like, she doesn't seem that interested in him. But I suspect it's because, like, I can't have any conversation with you, so I kind of don't know what to do with myself, so I'm just kind of gonna follow you around type of thing. Anyways, they sit down at some place, on some bench, and then Paul says, Paul, in the way Paul would ask, says, Hey, who's this guy, and who you're, like, um... Um, like look at the stuff you're writing on his stuff. I can understand um, when you're not seeing somebody every day and they're so far away you don't speak the language you're seeing all these signs that you kind of have to address it. Cranny was a little bit like I don't know what you're talking about like it's whatever um, type of thing and I didn't think um, she was putting Paul's fears um, she wasn't taking his fears into account um, of like you're this pretty young, attractive woman in another country far away from me and I want to make sure we're together for true love and not for 
um, for you to get a green card and stuff like that. So I was very, very um, reluctant to kind of trust Karinit and um, I didn't feel like she was being completely honest because um, I'm not one to be big on, I'm not one to be on social media, but you're not going to see me posting heart heart eye emojis on some next man's um, page, especially like when you have a man. And then she was kind of like, oh, he was teaching me how to work out and stuff like this. And you could have said like, oh, great bot or something else, but it was, it seemed a little bit too flirtatious for someone who's engaged, going to get married. Um, so that's kind of like all that was discussed with their storyline. Um, I don't like seeing the preview for the next episode, but I did see the preview for the next episode where they get into, is she pregnant? And then if she has any STDs, which I'll discuss when it's revealed um, in the next episode. So that's it with this couple. So the next couple I want to discuss is John and Rachel. So Rachel, I don't know how she packed up her child and went to Europe to meet John. I understand John's loved their life, they've been talking for a year and a half, but that's a big move in the relationship without knowing someone. Um, at least, I, I don't like bringing it up, but at least Nicole and Azin on the 90 Days uh, fiancé happily ever after, they, uh, Nicole went to Morocco first before she brought May. But anyways, she brought the baby, um, traveled all the way to the UK to meet John. So Rachel gets to the airport and she's just, she's sitting there with the with little Lucy waiting for the baby. Sorry, waiting for John, not waiting for the baby. And so she's kind of like, and let me tell you, everybody in the episode looks drained, looks tired from their flights. They look like they need to like sleep and relax. So especially um, Rachel. She's, so she's calling John and she's, she's like, hey, like, what's up? Like, um, where are you? Type of thing. And he's like, well, I'm not gonna pick you up from the airport. He knows she's traveling with a baby. So like, why would he do that? Or why didn't he tell her from time? So she's not standing around waiting and stuff and not figuring out where she needed to be. So then he tells her to meet her, meet her, uh, meet him at Pad Padis Padison or Paddington. What are those? The beer, the the one with the, the stuff there. Which I was like, oh, that's so cute. Me she's um she so she's gonna head there now. And she doesn't know, she's not familiar with the 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 um train system and stuff like that, so she has to figure that out. Also um logging a stroller in her suitcase which I hope the TLC crew was nice enough to actually carry it for her so she's on her way there they do this like little like 24 hour flashback um, thing before she had arrived so um, it's John and I did not know he was 34 living with his mom and dog um, I feel like it's kind of late to be still living with your mom later in life, but I'm not gonna judge. He's saving up money. It's great to live with your parents and save up money to go and do whatever you need to do. So, but it's a little iffy because not only is Rachel gonna have to meet him, and uh, he has to meet Lucy, but he also needs to meet her mom and stuff like this. So this relationship went from like zero to a hundred real quick. So now they went from like, oh, you're my boyfriend and girlfriend, to like, you're meeting my family, you're meeting my children, type of, type of stuff like that. So it's kind of moving really quickly. Um, so he has this little uh, baby area set up and stuff, and he knows nothing about children, he knows nothing about kids, nothing about babies, type of thing. So I could see in the future that becoming an issue because he didn't grow up, he didn't grow up, not grow up. But he wasn't there raising Lucy from when she was just just born. So 
he doesn't know all the ins and outs of doing simple tasks like changing diapers, um, burping, feeding a child and stuff like that. So that, all that stuff he has to learn then. And he has to learn in two weeks. So anyways, so I'm, I still can't believe she brought her baby all the way to the UK. Uh, anyways, he meets up with his friends and then he's telling them that, oh, I'm gonna meet her and stuff like this. They're kind of like, um, not giving him any slack and being like, oh, this is kind of weird and stuff. But anyways, um, your friends are gonna be friends and stuff. Uh, he's going to finally meet, Lu uh, why do I keep saying Lucy? He's gonna finally meet Rachel and Lucy. And so he's, I guess, walking to the train station and he like, He's so nervous that he's like vomiting, and I didn't appreciate that TLC actually showed the vomit. I found that to be just super disgusting. That was <laughs> really gross and made me sick to my stomach. And I'm so glad he had a toothbrush and stuff, because I was just like, please don't tell me he's going to be talking to her with like barf breath on his mouth. That would have been so disgusting. Um, anyways, they get there, so um, Rachel's at the at the station just kind of looking around waiting for him and then John gets there and then they reunite. That's the the way they reunite is the way that I expect someone to reunite when they haven't seen each other in years, in months, and for the in their case like forever. Um I felt like okay good. They both liked what they saw, but they also did see each other on like webcam and like FaceTime type of thing. So like they already knew what they looked like. Um, there's a lot of kissing involved and stuff to be, um, that's, that would be normal. And I really thought that they liked each other, or they loved each other type of one. I thought their relationship was very, very real, and it felt very, very real to me, versus, like, Paul and Creedy. <laughs> so, um... And next episode, it talks about him kind of tackling fatherhood, because he's kind of like Lucy's father or something like that, but him trying to tackle fatherhood and um, Rachel um, trying to be patient. So that's it for this couple. So let's get into the next couple. So let's talk about Ricky and Melissa. As soon as I saw Ricky and Melissa on um, episode one, I was like, catfish, catfish, like, where's Neve, where's, where's Max, this is a, a catfish, like, it sounded ridiculous, it didn't even sound, it didn't even sound, um, fake, it just sounded, like, ridiculous, like, if someone told you an over-exaggerated story, and you're just kind of like, eh, yeah, okay, like, you just don't believe them at all. Um, with Ricky's story, he is, first of all, he's not a bad guy, he's not a bad looking guy, he's, um, a single father, he comes off as a very good father, um, to two beautiful, um, girls, and he, I feel like he's cat, he's trying to capture the love that his parents have, um, or had, um, I feel like that type of love is kind of a once in a lifetime love or once in a blue moon love type of thing. It's not an everyday love. And I feel like he's going he's going about it the wrong way. He's coming off a bit desperate. Um and he shouldn't because he's not a bad guy. So, he's talking to this girl named Melissa. Melissa, where's she from? Colombia. And Melissa is she screams like uh, Melissa and Instagram model go hand in hand. Um, she has big titties, a round ass, she has a slim waist, she looks a little thick, she looks really 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 good, um, but she's also, she's also a nurse. <laughs> um, their, even their communication style is not compatible. I feel like Ricky is putting so much effort into communicating and talking to her and in his mind he's getting gassed up and like oh she really likes me type of thing and 
she's um, he's not really getting that same um, energy back. So I kind of feel sorry for him um, in that sense. But what I don't feel sorry uh, for is him deciding that he's going to go to Colombia. First of all, it's not cheap to travel. It's not cheap to travel to Colombia. And he's going to go stay at this hotel. He's going to call or contact Melissa. Who knows? Because he hasn't even seen her on FaceTime or anything. Yet she has like picture, pictures upon pictures upon pictures. And apparently no red flags for him. Whatever. Um, so yeah. It's just... He gets to Columbia, finds his way, gets to his hotel and everything, and then he's trying to contact Melissa saying, okay, we're going to meet at this restaurant, which, if you're coming to my hood, like, I should tell you where we're going to meet, because you don't know where she lives, she might have lived far from there, blah blah blah. She's, you're here and she hasn't contacted you. You should be very, very, very scared that she's not contacting you. Before you left the States, she was giving you the one the one word answers. And now she's completely not talking to you. And then you're kind of you're kind of still holding out and stuff. So he goes to the restaurant to go and meet her, buys her some beautiful bouquet of roses. And she's kinda of, and he's kind of waiting. And I'm like, he waited, um, it was like seven o'clock and he he sends her a text saying, like, okay, I'm at this restaurant. He takes a picture and says, like, here, I'm really here. No reply, no response, and everything. I think around 7.30, she responds and says, like, oh, I'm going to be late. I'm going to be there for 7.30, or something like that. She's going to be late. So I'm like, okay, finally she responds. Okay, she might be real. And then, okay, so time goes by and stuff, and I'm like, Ricky, are you going to send her another, e another text to be late? Okay, okay, like, what's the plan? Type of thing. Ricky sends her a text later on, but, like, after that, it was it was too late. Type of thing. I felt so bad for him, because he was sitting there, he spent his money on his little drinks, and he probably sobered up real quick, and he looks really dumb, because she didn't show up. So, we'll see what happens and stuff. I can't believe he's he would be on the show and have nobody type of thing so I think in future episodes I'll be revealed um, who Melissa really is whether she's real or not but like there's no evidence she's real right now and in my mind she's not real so let's talk about the next couple which is a new couple Tariq and not Tariq from Power Tariq and Hazel so <laughs> As I was watching the episode, I thought, like, I was laughing to myself, I'm like, Melissa and Hazel are, like, whispering to each other, like, ha, ah, they'll never know, <laughs> uh, type of thing. So, Tariq is in the same situation that Ricky's in. He, um, he's a single father of a beautiful uh, little girl as well, and he traveled Asia at one point and then realized he liked Asian women. I kind of felt like with that little segment, it got a little fetishy. He's like, oh, I like their eyes and the high cheekbones and the full lips uh, type of thing, which I was kind of like, okay. But anyways, so he has a love for Asian women, and he went on um, a dating website and found somebody. So he found Hazel, and Hazel is very cute. So I believe she's like 24, 25. Um, yeah, she's very good looking and stuff like that in the Philippines. And he has only texted her as well, which I shake my head to that as well. Like, there's all this technology out there. The, Philippi the Philippines is not the most well-off country, but it's not like super poor, where they wouldn't have an iPhone or they wouldn't have any type of phone or they, um, that would show video type of thing. So there's no reason why this grown man who's been on this earth for 43 years is speaking to a girl he's never seen before and like that's okay with him and not only that oh i forgot to mention in um ricky story they're trying to propose to these girls type of thing they've never met them before like meet me first see if you like what you see if you like what you see in person then let's talk about marriage but i don't understand these people and like we need to get married type of thing so then um 
he decides that he's going to go to the Philippines and see her. So he's talking to his brother and telling him the scenario, which I think his brother was out of line for the way that he was subjecting, um, not really subjecting, the way he was talking about Filipino women. And like, oh, are you only there to like basically F? And like, are, are these male order brides and stuff like that? Like, I know lots of Filipinos and like, I felt like he was, he was, he was very rude about the way he was talking about the country and the women in that country. Um, anyways, so his brother's just like, okay, I don't want you to go alone, so I'm going to go with you. Which I was just like, it's not cheap to um, travel to the Philippines. <laughs> Your brother's like, oh yeah, I'll just come with you type of thing. So yeah, his brother is going to go to the Philippines with them. And then, um, I believe the preview is going to show him waiting for Hazel. So we'll see. I don't believe she's real, or if she's real, she's not like Hazel, the Hazel he likes. But, you know, I could be wrong. We'll see. So, let's get into the next couple. So let's do Angela and Michael. So, Angela, Angela, Angela. She's... I can't believe that you're going to Nigeria, you need your, your passport and visa documentation, and you wait last minute to get that stuff. Like, you don't plan a trip to Nigeria tomorrow, so you knew you knew um, that you were going to go there and what time you are going to go there. You have to save up all that money. And for you not to not have your papers in order was, like, really dumb. I was just kind of like, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> that type of things. And she gets to call Michael, and, like, I thought TLC was doing, like, this whole, like, it was a whole like editing thing, like, oh, it's gonna look like she doesn't have her visa, but then she's gonna find last minute. But no, she really didn't have her visa. So then, as she calls Michael, it's like, I can't make it and stuff. And I'm like, okay, how's this gonna work? Is our trip gonna just get canceled? Uh, type of things. But I'm like, I knew I saw previews of her going there, so I'm like, okay, no. But she ends up getting her visa and going. I know that her daughters were kind of like disappointed, kind of like, damn, I wish she didn't get her visa. Um, and they're still kind of like talking to her about going and stuff. I also think that um, Angela is very um, head over heels in love kind of with Michael. That she um, is not seeing the signs that she kind of needs to slow down. I understand she's an older woman and she knows what she wants. She doesn't have time to be dating for a long time and stuff. But I feel like... She, she doesn't even know, she doesn't know the culture and stuff like that. She needs to get to know that stuff, too. Um, she doesn't have to know everything about Nigeria before she goes, but, like, get to know some of the stuff before she goes. Type of thing. Um, it's going to be a culture shock for her, but um, it is what it is she wants. So, yeah, sorry, my camera, my camera turned off. Um, so I know I was talking about Michael, I don't remember the last thing I said, but, um, they do the whole, um, 24 hours before Angela is going to come, and you kind of get to meet Michael, because you didn't really get to meet him in the first episode, and he's this online marketer for, for car dealerships in Nigeria, and he's telling his friends that his, his woman, Angela, is going to come and stuff, and I don't know how he didn't, um, reveal to his friends that, <laughs> she was 20 years older than him, <laughs> but his friends were dragging him, being like, oh, she could be your grandma, and all that stuff. I didn't appreciate how he kept kind of, like, talking about her as, like, she's my elder, I respect my elder, because that's a kind of, that's a weird way to look at it, because, like, that's your girlfriend. <laughs> that's your girlfriend, too. Um, the only thing I did not appreciate, no, there's two things I didn't appreciate. The first thing is a whole... I want to go to America to run a business. Um, that shows motive and that shows kind of where his head lies with things. He's planning to go to America. So it would be very convenient for him to get Angela to fall in love with him so he can marry her and go to America. Like that is his dream type of thing. The other thing that I was not feeling is the whole Donald Trump thing. He's an, I don't understand, if he's an online marketer, 
that means he has access to Google. So that means he can Google stuff about Donald Trump and all the shady things Donald Trump says and he's not actually a good business person. He had good business people around him but he's not actually a good business person and he's not a great person in general. And for him to kind of be like, oh that's kind of my eye on stuff, there are a lot of successful business people out there that he can look up to. For him to kind of say like Donald Trump is the one that I look up to, it was kind of just heartbreaking and it was annoying and I was just kind of like, like, like I was done with the story, I was like, okay, Michael can shut up, like whatever, um, type of thing. Um, there wasn't too much with their story, but in the next episode they finally meet and uh, Angela seems like super excited. So we'll see what happens with that couple. So let me see if there are any other couples left. Yes there is. I don't know how I can forget and how come I didn't mention them first. Darcy and Jesse. Darcy and Jesse, I believe in real life, in current times are not together, but Darcy and Jesse should have never gotten together. It, I'm, it's only been episode two and I'm done with their story. They're not a good compatible couple. Jesse is from the Netherlands, he's like 24, 25, and Darcy is from Connecticut and she's in her 40s, maybe 42, um, type of thing. So they have an age gap. But that doesn't, that doesn't hinder your relationship. But it's going to cause a strain on the relationship. And as you'll see in the future episodes, because they mention, um, she mentions Jesse meeting her kids and like she wants to be a father and stuff. Like he's 24, how can you be a father of like a 12 year old type of thing? It's, it's too much to handle and Jesse's saying, I don't want to be a father. Um, I don't want to compare them to Molly and Louise, but Louise wasn't as upfront with Molly to be like, this is, this is not what I want, I don't want to be a father. Jesse, on the other hand, as blunt as he is, was like, no, this is not for me. So what happens to our storyline is Darcy is looking fine, looking really, really good. I don't like her her ponytail though. And in the episode when she's in the hotel, she's like combing her ponytail. I didn't I didn't like how that looked. Anyways, um so yeah. Um, so a little bit of episode one, she meets um, Jesse, and they're going to spend time in New York before they go to uh, Connecticut, I believe, to meet her daughters. So they're in the car, and Jesse is talking to Darcy and asking her about landmarks and stuff like that, and she's unfamiliar with anything. And like, Jesse also like I guess forgot that she's not from New York. And he was being really rude, and he says some rude comments of like, makeup's not for everybody, and I thought it was so rude, and you could just see the way Jessie's emotions and the way her face changes. The way she's so excited to see Jessie, like, oh, Jessie's my man, he's so cute. And then he degrades her and talks down to her, and then she's kind of just, it's almost like you see her, she starts off here, and then she kind of goes like into this. So, um, anyways, they get to the hotel room, and they decide to go out for dinner. And Jessie wants to confront her about things she had said on social media, um, and how she likes to put her business out on Front Street. So, they get, to, they get to the restaurant, and you can see already the body language. They're sitting separate from each other. Not separate, they're sitting like a bit apart in a space that they could sit closer to each other. And just um, not Jesse, um, Darcy mentioned like, hey, like come sit closer to me. And then you kind of know Jesse's like, kind of like you come closer to me, which I was like, he's very very dominant and he's very assertive, but it comes off as very controlling and stuff. And she's very, she can be very submissive, um, type of thing. And there's no balance. It's like. She must be old. She must be submissive all the time, and he will, he will stay dominant. Um, and you can kind of see that see that in that scene. So, once again, they're at a restaurant that's like barely full, and I was just wondering, like, are 
are those real people that are actually eating, um, are actually like patrons of the restaurant or are they just like TLC people that just sit there and pretend like the restaurant actually has people in there? And he brings it up that she talks too much on social media, um, puts their business out there, which could affect his reputation and his job, um, especially with people thinking he's a cheater. And that's kind of a negative connotation um, against him. And Jesse is just kind of like, okay, I know that's happening, but like that's how she felt at the time. Anyways, they're talking, and I wasn't really paying attention to the conversation. I was more paying attention to the body language. The way that they were close together, and Jesse had her arms around uh, Jesse had her arm around um, Darcy, and then they argued, and then they separated, um, type of thing. And it was very much um, Jesse saying, "Darcy, you're wrong, 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 wrong." say you're wrong, say you're wrong, and Darcy saying like, I am I can acknowledge that there's things that are wrong, but like you cannot say like I'm always wrong, and that's her trying to stand up for herself, but she gets really upset, and then she leaves, so then I was kind of like, okay, well, we just watched her relationship end, and I know she wasn't going nowhere, because she's just hanging outside. If you're going to leave, like really leave, don't leave and then walk out the restaurant, leave your food sitting there, getting cold and stuff, for no reason. Anyways, she's like, oh, I'm not leaving him, and he's in a city by himself, he doesn't know anything, and she comes back. And when she comes back, it was so sad seeing her kind of like this again and being super, super submissive, and she was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that, I'm so sorry, type of thing. And as soon as Jesse heard it, Jesse was like, okay, you can come back to me. They were back, cuddling, back, being together. And I feel like, just, um, not Jesse, Darcy wants love, but she's finding in the wrong places. She was kind of, she likes Jesse for his appearance, but not his personality. And what she kind of fails to remember is that like looks fade, but your personality is here to stay. And Jesse is not the great the greatest person for Darcy. And I feel like Darcy will do anything Jesse says to keep him happy. She'll stand up for herself once in a while, but then he'll break her down again. Uh, type of thing, and her her tactic is like, I'm gonna say something and then leave, and then not go anywhere, type of thing. It doesn't affect him, he doesn't think you're going anywhere, you're gonna come back, and you do. So I was very, very saddened to see their scenes, and just kind of be like, damn, like, I'm watching this girl get, I'm watching this girl kind of fall apart emotionally, type of thing. And Jesse had no care in the world, showed no sympathy for her type of thing. Even just seeing her um, feel sad, it was kind of just like, she's wrong, she needs to admit she's wrong, and if she doesn't admit she's wrong, like she can't talk to me right now type of thing. He had a really, really stink attitude. And I have to admit, Jesse is not a bad looking guy, but people with those type of attitudes makes me immediately just think they're ugly type of thing. Where you might look so good on paper and stuff, you might look good to the eye, but then your personality stinks. So I now like, see you as an ugly person type of thing. And I don't know what Jesse would have to do to change that, but right now it is what it is. So I think that wraps up um, the, this episode of 90 Days Before the 90 Days, I believe it's called. Be sure to tune into the next videos I will record for this season. This this is one of my guilty pleasures, and this is the only reality TV show that I um, watch. I don't watch any other reality TV show. So there you have it. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just a dumb cunt, fucking sick and tired of it. Maybe I could front love, maybe I could buy it.